Productions. This is the life of the great leader Muhammad Ali Jinnah, and this is his story. Born on Christmas Day, 1876, Karachi, India, which is the city now belonging to Pakistan, the same country Jinnah established later life. He was born to a middle-class family consisted of seven siblings, his mother, Miti Bai, and his merchant father, Jinnah Bai Punjab. At the age of 16, he was offered an apprenticeship in London for Graham Shipping and Trading Company. However, before leaving, he was all forced into an arranged marriage with his first cousin, Emmy Bai, as his parents were not so keen on Jinnah marrying an English woman. However, the marriage lasted for a year due to the sudden death of Emmy Bai, and months later, his mother passed away. However, with this tragic news, he was still ambitious and later changed career to law to become a barrister. He joined Lincoln's Inn. It was this time while studying London University, one professor severely underestimated Jinnah's capabilities due to his hatred for him. Mr. Jinnah, what did you understand that a pig and a bird cannot sit together to eat? You do not need to worry, Professor. I'll fly away. <laughs> Grrr! Jinnah, if you were walking down the street and found a package, and within was a bag of wisdom and another bag of money, which one would you take? The one with the money, of course. I in your place, would have taken the wisdom. Each one takes what he doesn't have. Mr. Peters, you signed the sheet, but you did not give me a grade. By 1900, he became a magistrate in Bombay and rose to fame when he cracked a cocker's case in 1907. By the beginning of the 20th century, as the British Empire was at its longest period, tensions grew amongst Muslims and Hindus as the violence erupted between the two groups, especially our vigilantes. Jinnah needed to do something and became Bombay's Muslim representative at the time when only Hindus were representatives. By the same year, he heard about the All-Muslim League on a newspaper. He joined the League after several meetings while being a part of the Congress. He became an ambassador for the Hindu-Muslim unity by the Congress leaders. Other members include Gandhi and Nehru. As Jinnah wanted separate electorates for Muslims, things started to fall apart between him and the Congress. Nevertheless, he still stayed strong to believe in a united India someday. By this time, his second wife, Ratanbai, a Parsi girl from Bombay, passed away. For the first time in his career, he shed tears and stood still at the ceremony. During the 1930s, tensions grew even stronger by the two groups, and one day, philosopher and poet Mama Dikbal proposes the two-nation theory to Jinnah. It was right there that he vowed to fight for the separate Muslim state, not only for Muslims, but also for women's rights and for the lower castes ethnic and religious minorities, despite Islam being the state religion. By 1940, Jinnah came up with a proposal of partition for a separate state, a demand which includes areas of majority Muslim population. This idea did not sit well with Gandhi as he tried to convince him after a meeting. Ah, Mr. Gandhi. 
Nice to see you. How have you been? Mr. Jinnah, we need to talk. Listen. No, we need a united India. We need to keep trying. Our people need us. By 1947, Lord Mountbatten, a British Navy officer, was sent to India and to be trusted to hand over the power to the country while drawing the map of Pakistan. Right, I've been summoned to India for a meeting to resolve the war that's been going on with the Hindus and the Muslims. I present to you Iqbal's Two Nation Theory. This will save many lives of the Muslims around India. I hope you come to agreement to give us the land you drew out. It's decided then. You will agree with the land I drew out for you. Then I shall accept this agreement of Pakistan becoming a reality. Alright, let's shake on it. Lord Mountbatten, India was always ours and we can plan out the solution without the British interrupting our plan. Besides, I have eventually came to an agreement with Jinnah's Pakistan with no other option. When independence came for Pakistan, Jinnah has this to say. Pakistan <laughs>